Most finishes are about control. You dip, you wipe, you decide when it's done. But there's another method, one that's less about applying and more about allowing. You build the space, add the ingredients, and then you wait. The change happens within the grain, not above it. Today, you and I are going to make ammonia fuming make sense. Discovered when a freshly cut board was left in a horse table and came out looking aged, this method's been around for a long time. Back then, it was urine in the air, but today we use a more refined process, combining nitrogen from the air with hydrogen under high heat and pressure to make ammonia. But what's actually happening when the ammonia hits the wood? Ammonia is an invisible gas, so it's really tough to picture what's actually happening. Instead, let's look at something we can actually see smoking a piece of meat. Here you can see the smoke enveloping the beef. As it cooks, gases from the meat react with the meat surface proteins. We'll ignore the delicious outer bark and focus on what's happening inside. See that thin red ring? The color isn't paint or seasoning, it's the smoke itself changing the meat from within. Ammonia fuming works almost the same way. The vapor reacts with the wood's surface tannins instead of proteins, but the idea is identical. A gas triggering a color change from just beneath the surface. Ammonia smells awful. It's dangerous if you use it wrong, and it's not exactly cheap. So why bother? Stains sit on the surface and soak in unevenly. Soft grain consumes more, hard grain stays light. Details get lost and end grain goes dark like a sponge. I have three samples here from quarter sawn white oak. This is the original untouched piece. I sectioned this piece off and fumed it for about eight hours, and then I took it to Home Depot to color match it. The stain that they gave me was this. I cut off another section from the main piece and applied the stain. Ignore the fact that the colors don't match. That's not the point of this test. If we look at the stain piece, you can see that it's blotchy. It's inconsistent. It doesn't look natural. I know there are purists out there that will never stain their wood, and I think it's because of this. No matter how careful you are, stain can look fake. Some areas soak more, others less. It just doesn't look like nature. But the fume piece, it's clear, and it looks natural. The reflex from the quarter sawn oak is balanced and took the fuming just as evenly as every other part of the oak. Even the end grain holds its tone. Bob Flexner once said there's no real reason to fume anymore, that dyes can do the same thing. But I've tried both, and I'm telling you right now, they don't look the same. Not even close. But there is a catch. Fuming only adds color. You still need to finish the wood to protect it. The easiest way to fume wood is to hang your finished project in a horse stall right above your horse. But if you're the kind of person who cleans stalls or doesn't have a horse, the next best thing is a replica setup using lab-made ammonia. Ammonia comes in three types. There's household ammonia, which is around 5 to 10%. Janitorial strength is stronger, about 10 to 15%. But for real results, you need lab-grade ammonia, usually around 25 to 30%. Unfortunately, unless you're using the lab stuff, the reaction is going to be pretty weak, which really makes me wonder just how nasty that original horse stall was. Now, I did find a supplier on Amazon. It's linked in the description. It's not cheap, but the good news is you only need a tiny bit each time. Next, you'll need a non-reactive container with a wide opening. A quart jar will work, but it's better to use a bowl. Wider surface areas are going to release more of the ammonia into the air faster than something smaller. I found this porcelain cat bowl at Menards. It's perfect for small samples. I found a larger glass bowl that I'll use with a larger setup. And really, you only need about a quarter inch to a half inch of liquid when it's time to fume. Just don't use metal or wood, stick to glass or porcelain. Speaking of surface area, you'll want all sides of your wood exposed as much as possible. If I'm fuming a flat board like this, laying it directly on the floor of the chamber will block one side from reacting. I use these little nesting blocks I made years ago, and the way that they work is that each block has a nail on it. So I place one down like this, another one, I'll place my stock on top, and as you can see, I've got plenty of space for the fuming to go all the way around this without having any kind of problems. I'll leave a link to these nesting blocks in the description, but really all you need is a nail through a block for this to work. As for the chamber itself, you can get creative. For this sample, I used a cardboard box and sealed the seams with packing tape, but you can use a cooler or a storage bin. I've even seen people build tents using PVC pipe and plastic sheeting. Whatever traps the fumes and gives the wood time to react will work. Wear gloves, it stings if you get it on your hands. Wear a mask and do not go sniffing the bottle. I'm not telling you how I know. And you'll want to use safety glasses or better yet, full goggles. The best time to use ammonia fuming is when you're working with woods that are naturally high in tannins. White oak reacts beautifully. It's consistent, even, and rich. Softer woods like pine either won't change at all or they'll turn out blotchy. And with darker woods like walnut, you'll sometimes get unexpected results, including a weird greenish tone that doesn't look aged, it just looks off. 
That is at least from what I've done in the past. I've never officially tested a wide range of species, but today we'll see what happens. I have about 21 different types of wood species in front of me, but keep in mind, even within the same species, results can vary. That's true with fuming, staining, really any kind of finishing. But here's my plan. I'm gonna bundle them all together with spacers in between and wrap them up with tape. As I mentioned earlier, fuming works best on woods that are high in tannin. A common trick is to apply black tea first, let it dry, and then fume the wood. So we're testing that to see if it helps or does anything at all. One end will be treated with black tea, the center masked off for a control, and the other will be left untreated, just fuming. Before we cut this off, I did add an arrow to show which side I added the T to, but we'll cut the tape off and see what we're left with. As I do this, let me give you another tip for fuming. Just like you can darken a piece of stock by adding layers of stain, you can do the same thing with fuming by adding time. White oak can show results in under an hour, but if you really want it dark, let it sit for 12 hours or more. My T is on this side, I'm going to switch this around and we'll open this up. It looks like I misjudged how much the tape would block the vapors. I used clear packaging tape thinking it would seal off the center sections, but ammonia had other plans. Turns out it doesn't care about masking. It made its way into every part of the wood. So to make things clear, I went back and cut slices from the original boards so that we can compare the before and after side by side. If I've proven anything here, it's that ammonia vapors penetrate a lot deeper than I expected. I wanna point out that the T side is much darker no matter which one we went with. I did use four bags of this English breakfast tea, so it could be that it's just dark because of that, but that was the only thing that really made a difference on every single one of them. I've lined them up from the darkest to the lightest, so let's look at them now. The most dramatic difference that I found is Purple Heart. It turned it from purple to this charcoal grayish look. Absolutely amazing. I've had these set up for about an hour now, and there is a little bit of an ammonia smell, and I can already see that this piece is starting to change just being right next to it. Both of the oaks had the next dramatic difference. Padu changed color, but it looks like more like what it does when it just normally ages. And Bacote got just a slight bit darker. You'll notice that I have two different walnuts here. One was sapwood and the other one was more of the heartwood. The heartwood I think changed a lot more. Sapwood, not as much, but there was a little bit of a difference. And on the next section, I saw absolutely no difference at all. Spalted hackberry, pine, cherry, Kentucky, coffee and red heart really didn't do much of anything. And then what really surprised me was that yellow heart, ash, and hard maple seemed to actually get a little bit lighter. So I think that that was kind of an interesting thing. Maybe not ash as much, but yellow heart definitely. I do have two maples in here, one was a curly. I don't know if that makes a big difference, but this one actually reacted and got lighter than the, the other one. These results were very interesting, and in the future, if I ever plan on doing any fuming, I probably will just stick with my oaks. Purple Heart's a little too expensive for this charcoal looking look, but it's a little more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Despite using a harsh chemical like ammonia, this is actually one of the most natural ways to age wood. Ammonia doesn't color the project, it awakens it. If you wanna try this age old technique yourself, I've linked the lab grade ammonia I use down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you got something out of this, high five the like button and hug the subscribe. There's more on the way. Huge thanks to my patrons who help keep this work going. If you want to join the team or leave a tip in the jar, there's a link down in the description. And remember to keep making things.